So we've been doing a whole series on ice cream, looking at different methods, and we had to save the most dramatic for last, liquid nitrogen. In this video, we're going to explore why we use liquid nitrogen, where it comes from, and if it really does result in a better ice cream. One of the main uses of liquid nitrogen is to make things really, really cold quite quickly. How cold is liquid nitrogen? Seriously cold. So how cold is seriously cold? I don't know, you tell us. Take a guess. Here's a hint. Water at its frozen state, aka ice, is zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're talking negative 196 degrees Celsius. Okay, to give you some point of comparison there, water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and it's room temperature at 20 degrees Celsius. That's just a 20 degree difference. So now think about the difference of almost 200 degrees. We're talking seriously cold. So we went to the Science Center at Harvard University to get our liquid nitrogen, but you could really get liquid nitrogen at a lot of different places. And guess what? That entire gigantic tank is about $100 worth of liquid nitrogen. So where is that liquid nitrogen actually coming from and why is it so cheap? Well, it has to do with the fact that it's coming from a really abundant and plentiful source right in nature. So where do we actually find liquid nitrogen? Well, it's in the air all around us. About 78% of the air is actually nitrogen and only 21% is oxygen. So even though we often talk about oxygen, kind of gets more of the focus because that's what we breathe and need, the majority of air is actually nitrogen. So how does a lab or ice cream store actually get liquid nitrogen? Are they collecting it just from the air around us? Actually, yeah. And so all we need to do is one, make that nitrogen gas around us into a liquid by cooling it to extremely cold temperatures and two, isolating the liquid nitrogen from the other gases in the air. So oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide. And the way we do that is first by bringing everything down to a really cold temperature through both playing with temperature and pressure. And then we separate out the gases by their boiling point. And that method is called fractional distillation. So essentially we have air liquefied because it's at a really, really cold temperature. And as we bring up that temperature and we reach each gas's unique boiling point, it'll vaporize off and we can individually collect it and isolate it. Nitrogen with its coldest boiling point will be the first to vaporize off. And so once we have that nitrogen vapor, we have to cool that back down into a liquid to have the isolated liquid nitrogen. If you wanna see a cool video where you can actually see exactly the, the complexities of this and how it's done, you should check out Veritasium and we'll link it below. And we're going to use our mango passion fruit mixture and just pour it in. And as I pour in the liquid nitrogen, you're just going to whisk. So otherwise it'll freeze to the bottom of the bowl, essentially. In order to think about what's going on here, let's first think about the liquid nitrogen. When it comes out of the container, it's a really cold liquid. And as soon as it hits the warmer air, liquid, and bowl, it immediately vaporizes and turns into a gas because it's an extreme change in temperature and it's way past its boiling point. For the ice cream, it almost has the opposite effect. As the really cold liquid nitrogen hits the ice cream, it's solidifying the ice cream almost immediately. To help visualize what's actually going on molecularly, we used a FET simulation that we've also linked below. Here we used argon, which isn't nitrogen, but is a similar gas and has a similar boiling point. We started it at a negative 180 degrees Celsius and then warmed it up to room temperature, which is about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. You can see the particles are moving a lot more quickly and are spaced out, which is what we see as that big dramatic vapor coming off of the liquid nitrogen. The particles in the ice cream, on the other hand, are slowing down significantly. Here we used water, which actually makes up about half of ice cream. And you can see the water molecules are significantly slowing down as we decrease the temperature to that freezing point. Not only does it look pretty cool and takes only a minute or two, but the speed at which we're freezing the ice cream is also really important to the actual texture of the ice cream. 
Essentially, the ice crystals will be much, much smaller when you freeze them more quickly. And so what we're going to have is smaller ice crystals within the ice cream form, which results in a smoother mouthfeel. Ooh, look at it! That's ice cream! All right, we accomplished our original goal. We have ice cream. I feel like it actually, I, like, I know it's smoother because the crystals are smaller because it frees so quickly, but it doesn't look smoother. Like, it doesn't look. Well, there's only one way to find out. That's true. I'll give it a taste test in a sec. I wonder how they, they must do something to the texture a little bit, like when they scoop it to make it look better. Oh, wow. Okay, I take back what I said about the looks. It's definitely smoother. Tastes like really smooth gelato. Yeah. Like, it definitely tastes smoother than your typical ice cream, right? Yeah, but it doesn't look that way. No. Like, I wish it looked a little more appetizing. <laughs> You're just going to have to take our word for it that it tastes significantly better. Or I don't know, maybe not necessarily better, but smoother than your standard ice cream, even though it doesn't look like it. Okay, I haven't really had breakfast, so like this probably isn't the best <laughs> thing to keep eating. <laughs> we so often think of boiling point with just reference to water. And yes, water is a great example, right? We have water at room temperature, which is about 20 degrees Celsius, and we heat it up to 100 degrees Celsius, and it boils off. And we can see that when we make pasta or make tea, and you see that steam, which is the water vapor, as the water turns from a liquid to a gas, once it hits, hits that boiling point, we see that phase change happen. The same exact thing is happening with liquid nitrogen, but at much, much colder temperatures because the boiling point of liquid nitrogen is about negative 200 degrees Celsius, give or take. And so we're talking about a boiling point that is 200 degrees colder, or 300 degrees colder than water. And so it's the same exact idea where we're having this cold liquid vaporize and turn into a gas. And that's why we see that gas from the liquid nitrogen evaporate off of the liquid right away at room temperature. So you might have seen that we got a little carried away and obsessed with liquid nitrogen as we were making this episode. And so we're actually going to be doing more videos on liquid nitrogen and the different experiments we did. Be sure to stay tuned and like and subscribe for more.